This week on Adventure Sport, I'm going to show you how I turned this uber unique two headed vintage flashlight into an uber unique vintage two headed flashlight with a modern high power LED light engine. Today is a good day. I have had these vintage flashlights for so long and I've been just dying to work on them. Oh, I love old flashlights. You know, they're like old people. They, they have a story to tell. Each of these lights had something fairly unique about it. And the one that we're going to start with right now is this two-headed beast. I think, I think that just, <laughs> I've never seen anything like that. To me, it looks, it looks like a robot. It's like, Wally. Wally. I hope I don't get a copyright strike for that. <laughs> Now, I ordered some of the old schoolie bulbs for this, so why don't we take a look at what the factory beams looked like. Finding an old school light that has anything to do with a soft beam to me is just amazing because all of them it before like surefire and streamlight came around your only expectation was the pac-man shaped donut Now, besides just the way that it looks, there is a lot to love about this flashlight. And starting with, okay, it's it's this lantern style body, which I think is cool. And it's got the handle, which makes it super easy to carry. Uh, but what I thought was great about it is inside this housing, you could stick a lantern battery. But alternatively, you can stick... Eight D cell batteries inside that. Uh, beyond that, um, we did get corrosion free. I mean, look at the brass shine in there. That's that's just how this came to me. Super heavy contacts all over. I mean. You, do, you can't ask for more, that it's perfect. The switches, switch is, not just switch, but this guy, it's got the two heads. Now, in order to get a good high power light engine in here, uh, we're gonna have to make some heat sinking because these, I mean, this stuff is not gonna do it, obviously. So what my plan is, I wanna use uh, these. That's a, a Noctagon triple with that optic because it's really short and so it won't take up a lot of space. That'll get save us some room try, not trying to use the reflector. And we'll use uh, one with a, a spot optic and one with a wide optic so that we keep with the spirit of their original design.
Now, along with all of that great character come some pretty uh, interesting challenges when you go to modify one of these. If you're just getting into flashlight modding, I do not recommend starting with a vintage light because as cool as they are, they're some of the hardest lights ever to mod and they take a ton of time. You know, we typically think the body is gonna be ground, but it's not. Um, in this case, that's battery positive. That wouldn't be a problem except if you want to take a piece of raw metal for your heatsink and stick a driver in it, by default, the outside is ground. So we have to figure out a way to work around that. And that's just like one of the things. Okay, because of that electrical issue and also because of the way the switch works mechanically, uh, I have to isolate the heat sink from the body and the way we're gonna do that is to machine some acetyl to make kind of a shroud to go around that. So here's a bit of irony for you. This is the new Noctagon, the triple that I just found out existed. It comes by default. It's wired in parallel. There's no way the old ones you could twist that little bar around and you get series or parallel. and. It, don't get me wrong, I'm thrilled that they finally decided to do this. This is what I wish they would have been pretty much all along. But the one time ever in the history of Noctagon, someone needed this PCB to be wired in series, I get the new version. I guess we get to re take these off of here and reflow them on to the old version first. Now that our epoxy's cured, we need to hook our puck up to the bench power supply and see how much current we can run to this that's sustainable with this amount of heat sinking. Since we're three series on this, I'm thinking probably 350 milliamps is going to be the right spot. Okay, while that's working, we're going to get our driver board ready, and what we're going to use is this. It's a 7135 chip based driver. Some people call them NANG or NANJG or Q Lite. They go by a lot of different names. Normally, you can only use these with um, like 4.2 volts. You can use them at higher voltages if the voltage of your LED matches the battery perfectly. Basically, if you could direct drive it, but you just want to limit the current a little bit and you change some of the components. We're going to do the Zener, Zen, uh, Zener diode mod, and I'm going to put a link in the description to where I learned that because I'm probably not the best guy to be advising you on how to do that.
And last but not least, we are going to flash these with some single mode firmware. Okay, so we've had our puck running here for uh, 40, 42 minutes now. So we're going to check and see what our temp is like. Getting some 92 degrees on there. I can't get both of those in there at the same time, but if I just slip one of these out, I think I can get a read on it. Okay, so after I calculated everything back, my numbers are, I got 453 lumens for the SMO optic and 409 for the frosted optic. So we're sitting at just under a thousand lumens out the front, sustainable for 10 hours straight. It's a good day to be flashaholic. For more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Good luck.